Female Foley catheter insertion. Before I start, I need to make sure that I have the right patient, that I've checked orders, that the head, that the height of the bed is at waist height or higher, I have a clean bedside table, that my patient's in the right position, and that I have all of my um, supplies. What I need is my Foley cath insertion kit, a pair of clean gloves, towel and washcloth for when I'm all done with the procedure so I can clean up my patient. Now, I'm going to open my kit, I need to take it out of the package, and I'm going to set this one up in between the patient's legs. If you watch the male catheter insertion, you will see the other way that you can set up your sterile field for Foley cath. Now, when you are opening your Foley cath kit, you want to make sure that the first tab that you open goes away from yourself so that you don't cross over your sterile field. After you open the first tab, the other one should walk around in a fashion that you can make sure that you're not crossing over your field. And then remember you have your one-inch border, so if you need to reposition, I can move it down a little bit and turn it or whatever I need to do. The next thing I need to do is take this drape out of the kit. I need to find the edge of the corner that I can lift it up without touching anything else in the kit and come up and away so that it falls that I can find the edges. And I want to open it up with my hands. I can walk around if I need to. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up setting it down like we do with other sterile fields with minimal crossover. Now, if the patient's able to, you're going to have them lift up their hinder so you can slide it underneath. Now I have a sterile drape between her legs along with my sterile field. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gloves out of the kit, bring them back to my bedside table, which means that I don't cross over my sterile field, and I'm going to put my gloves on, on the bedside table. Notice I have my bedside table at waist height as well so that I make sure that I'm not below my waist height because it would be considered contaminated. My first glove, I need to come up and off my field, so I'm going to come up and off and take a little step away and I need to slide it on grabbing the cuff first. If you have any questions about sterile gloving, please make sure you watch the sterile gloving video. The second glove I grab by the cuff, make sure my thumb is out, come up and away, and I'm ready to move back towards my sterile field. This is the fenestrated drape that has a hole in the middle. We don't use that for female cath. My garbage is set up on my bedside table, so you'll see me move supplies off of the of the video screen to put on my garbage pile, or I can have a garbage at my feet, which I will drop from waist height into the garbage can, making sure they don't contaminate. You'll open your iodine package. I'm not going to do that because it's very messy. You open your iodine package right here, tearing down, and you pour it over your cotton balls. Come over here and drop it on your sterile field or your contamination. Here's my lube. My lube gets squirted into this container right here. And that goes back over my garbage. And now I'm going to separate my two fields out. I have my catheter box, and I have the cotton balls and the syringe with water to inflate my balloon. Now the catheter in the container has a blue sterile covering over the sterile catheter. So when you take this blue covering off, you need to make sure that you have control of your catheter the entire time so that it doesn't flop off of your sterile field. So you'll see I'm pulling it with my right hand while my left hand is making sure that I take the sterile catheter to make sure that it's not flapping around and the blue container goes into my trash. Now you can either coil your catheter back up in the box or you can lay it in your lube right there as long as you know that it's not going to flop off your sterile field. We have barred catheters in our lab which means that we do not test our balloon. We only will connect it to the pigtail port right here so that we can inflate the balloon once we're done with this procedure. If you needed to test your balloon, you could do that by doing a little bit of insertion, and you can see the balloon rise, and then you let it passively deflate, going back down, if you have a different catheter brand. We do not, so we do not do that step. We just connect it there, and we let it lie. Now, before I move to contaminating my left hand, I need to make sure that I got my cotton balls ready right here, my lube is ready, and my catheter is ready. Once I know that, I can move over to contamination. I'm going to use my hand on their symphysis pubis, put my thumb and first finger together, I'm going to go in and separate out the labia majora and minora, and I'm going to find my urethra. Once I do that, I need to grab sterile cotton balls with the iodine solution in my sterile forceps, 
and I'm going to come and I'm going to cleanse her off. Now you can go side, middle, side, middle, side, side, it doesn't matter as long as you're cleansing the whole area. You do one swipe down, I need to move my, cap, my cotton ball around my sterile field to make sure that I do not cross over. Grab my next cotton ball and I'm going to do the next one. And I come around and my third cotton ball and do the other side. Now, for females, you may have to use all five cotton balls that come in the kit, which is just fine. So you can go ahead and finish up with your last cotton ball and come around the sterile field, and then you're done with that. Next comes a catheter. Make sure it's lubed about two inches up, so that there's lube there. It goes into the urethra. Make sure you don't touch your finger to the labia. All the way into you see urine. I see urine right now. I bring my thumb and first finger off of the catheter, off of her and onto the catheter, and I inflate the balloon. Now when you start to inflate, you need to make sure that you ask them, are they having any pain? If they say no, you may continue to inflate all the way, all 10 cc's. Once that balloon is inflated, I can bring my fingers off here, disconnect there, put that down. You gently tug back to make sure the catheter is in the bladder neck. Now I'm gonna transition from my sterile gloves to clean gloves. Okay, now that I have my clean gloves on, now I'm going to clean up my garbage right here. Fold that up. I'll throw it in my waste paper bag. I'm going to take my catheter out, move this down, get rid of my garbage here. The catheter will hang on a non-movable part of the bed. There's usually a cath holder off the end of the bed, which you probably won't see. I need to make sure my patient can put her legs down. I'm going to secure the catheter some way, shape, or form, piece of tape, cath secure, or something. And before I take off my clean gloves, I'm going to reach back and get the towel and washcloth that I had. I'm going to roll it out, and I'm going to make sure that I do good peri care for her so that the betadine that I had on her is off. And you'll notice I'm switching the sides of my washcloth and then cleansing off the catheter. When I'm done with that, I can dry her. Roll that up into dirty laundry. Take off my clean gloves. And then with just my hands, I can go ahead and get my patient covered. Make sure I put the bed down. When I have the bed down in the starting position, I can put down the extra side rails I had up across the bed because I was by myself putting this catheter in. And when I'm done with that, then I'm going to wash my hands. And after I wash my hands, I will document the procedure. And I will document the catheter that I put in, the size, if I had any difficulty, the amount of urine, the type of urine that I had, and the color and quality of the urine. Mm -hmm.